Good evening. Let me confess something. Short confession. <clears throat> when uh, Pastor Paul invited me to come here, I assume that he will request me to give a little uh, presentation. And I'm thinking of, I was then thinking of something in my mind to share. Upon reaching this place this afternoon, we heard him present, pre he presented about Elijah and my wife uh, told me, oh, Elijah, what a beautiful message. And it's good you will share about Nehemiah. <laughs> I said to myself, oh, I have something different. I have something different in my mind. So anyway, I just listen. Then the next speaker, oh, it's about Joshua. My, 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 my wife told me, oh, it's about Joshua. Wow. <laughs> and yours is Nehemiah. <laughs> no, she heard me uh, preach about Nehemiah. And I told her, Actually, I have something in my mind. <laughs> and when I'm looking at, the, at my computer to get that uh, message, oh, I can see it. <laughs> What's in my mind to share to you cannot find in my computer. So I said, I prayed, Lord, please let me understand uh, the message that you want me to bring to these people. 
because I am thinking of something and my wife is telling me different thing, <laughs> another thing. <laughs> I, I am now confused because I believe my wife is a godly woman and I always listen to her. <laughs> but I have something in my mind. Please help me. When I have something in my mind that conflicts with my wife, I have to pray. <laughs> because God will not contradict himself. <laughs> For me, she is a godly woman. When she speaks, I, I, I take it as a message from the Lord. Uh, a word from the Lord. So, again, he, she told me, Oh, Nehemiah is the right message. But I again, I said to myself, but I don't have PowerPoint for this message. <laughs> so I prayed again, and God confirmed me, yes, I will share to you about Nehemiah. <laughs> so God wins. Um, <clears throat> so let me share to you about uh, this Nehemiah. You know Nehemiah? It's a cup bearer to King Artaxerxes. In chapter 1, uh, Nehemiah was introduced, cup bearer, and during the Persian kingdom, cup bearer was a trusted advisor to the king and a high official in the palace. As cup bearer, Nehemiah had a great job. A place to live in the palace. And everything he needed was provided. So we can think of having that uh, lifestyle in the palace. A high-ranking official, very close to the king, trusted by the king. Everything is supplied. What more can you ask for? Everything is there. <clears throat> Yet one of his brothers returned from a road trip to Jerusalem. About 900 miles away from the capital of Persia. And he learned about the news, the bad news. Regarding the remnant, the ruin, the reproach of God's people in Jerusalem. Nehemiah could have insulated himself if he chose, but he didn't. It's easy for us to stay uninvolved, but not so with Nehemiah. I heard someone told the story about a preacher. The preacher was so dynamic and he, uh, he preached to his congregation and he said, let the church walk. And the congregation is very responsive and they said, let the church walk. So the more the preacher becomes so uh, animated <laughs> and he said, oh, so let the church run. And the congregation responded again, Oh, let the church run! Again, the preacher said, Oh, very interesting. So, let the church fly! And the congregation responded again, Oh, let the church fly! Very interesting. Very active church. Very responsive. And the preacher said, But it takes money for us to fly. And the congregation responded, Let the church walk! You know, it's one thing to say and another thing to do. When it comes to money, we prepare. <laughs> we prepare to walk. In the same manner, in the case, not so in the case of Nehemiah. It's easy to insulate himself knowing that he, when he uh, joined or um, have concern for the people in Jerusalem, it will cost him a lot of things. Efforts, his job, resources, 
his family, his convenience, many things. Nevertheless, when he heard the sad news, he hit the ground and began to weep and fasted. He was broken over the complacency of the people of Jerusalem. Those people in Jerusalem, they were living in ruins and they accepted it as if everything is okay. They were willing to walk around the devastation instead of being concerned enough to do something about their situation. Friends, nothing is ever going to change in our life and in the life of our church until we become concerned about our mission, about the glory of God. When we talk about the ruins in Jerusalem by the time, the walls of Jericho, the walls of Jerusalem was not for the protection of the people, but it talks about beyond security and protection. It talks about the honor and the glory of God. So when the wall was brought down, it means the glory of the Lord was at stake. It was a reproach in the name of the Lord. I remember one deacon approached me after an hour of worship, after hour of worship, and he said, Lord, uh, Pastor, uh, if only I could buy concern, I will buy many and give it to our church members because many of our church members, as he told me, don't have concern for the church and its development and its mission. If only I could buy, I will buy, so I will give every member of the church that concern. Brothers and sisters, let me picture to you Nehemiah, a man concerned for the kingdom of God. A man concerned about the glory of the Lord. In chapter 1, Nehemiah prayed and asked God's favors. After much prayer, planning, and waiting, opportunity came in Nehemiah chapter 2. So let's see. In Nehemiah chapter 2, particularly, um, okay, the king told him, or uh, when the king told him, what do you request? The king, you know, in, uh, you can see in the, in the appearance of Nehemiah that he, he was so concerned about the people and the kingdom of God in Jerusalem. The king can sense that he was burdened with a burden burning in his heart, in his soul. And so the king asked him, what do you request? And he was ready for this opportunity. And his reply can be summarized in two short sentences from verses 4 to 6 and verses 7 to 10. Send me to Judah and give me timber. Nehemiah faced a God-sized project, the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. The circuit of the walls was more than a mile long and the new wall needed to be three or four feet thick and 15 to 20 feet high. Now, this was not going to be easy, but Nehemiah knew that he and his people had to give their best to it. It takes resources to be concerned. means money. It's good to have our meetings here. Very convenient, right? But it takes money. It takes sacrifice. It takes not only heart to be here, but also 
We have to give our wallet. <laughs> Maybe someone will say, oh, in that case, let us just settle in barrio. <laughs> <laughs> but not so with Nehemiah. And let me see each one of you as the modern Nehemiah concerned for the kingdom of God. Concerned for the glory of God. And in this place, the glory of the Lord will be seen. God will be exalted in our midst. Nehemiah invited the king to become partner in this great project. So here's an important, oh, not, not that important, but an idea. God can use not only believers, but also the unbelievers to accomplish His will. Just like this place, the owner is not a Seventh-day Adventist, but we have this place, not for 60,000, not for 50,000, not for 30, but for 15,000. We got the favor. And so with Nehemiah, Nehemiah found favors in the sight of the king. We will always find favors in the sight of God. Nehemiah's strategy, prayer and partnership. His strategy in building the walls of Jerusalem is by prayer and partnership. Prayer and partnership. Just like what we are doing right now. We have this prayer and fasting. This is very, very important in the success of the kingdom of God. Let's all get involved in prayer and fasting as much, as frequent as we can. And let's have partnership. He prayed to God of heaven. He boldly asked God to hear his prayers. By the way, prayer is not getting man's will be done in heaven, but getting God's will be done on earth. However, for God's will to, become, to, be, to be done on earth, he needs people. People like you and me to cooperate with him. While Nehemiah was praying, his burden for Jerusalem became greater and his vision of what needed to be done became clearer. He didn't pray for God to send someone else. He simply said, here am I. Send me. He could think of sending people to Jerusalem, but no. He said, my king, please send me to Jerusalem to be concerned in God's kingdom is not only thinking of someone else to be concerned for his kingdom but it should come to us to our family first let's get involved personally Nehemiah did more than praying he invited the king to become partner, to become his partner in rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. So he asked for and received three things from the king. Permission to go to Jerusalem and reveal it. Protection, a letter for the governors for safe travel and assistance. And provision, the resources of the king was needed to build the wall of Jerusalem. Nehemiah knew the materials needed to accomplish his plan. In the same way, when Jesus sent his disciples out to minister, he first gave them the authority they needed to do the job. And he promised to meet their every need. And as we go forth to serve the Lord, we have behind us all the authority in heaven and in earth. So we don't have to be afraid. The important thing is that we go where he sends us and that we do the work 
He has called us to do. We are all empowered by the Spirit. We are all talented. We are all gifted. Not only some are gifted. All of us, every one of us is gifted so that we could involve and do the mission the Lord has given us. I would like to share this uh, one good quotation from Henry Ford. He said, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Thinking together is unity. And working together is success. This gathering is the beginning wherein later we'll see the success. And beyond success, we'll see the God whom we serve is glorified in our hearts, in our family, in our church, in our community, in this place. So in Nehemiah's plan, he understood that he wasn't there to, be, to do the project by himself, nor to do it for them, but to partner with them. At first, he partnered with the king. Then when he went to Jerusalem, he talked about the council, he talked about the people there, and told them, let us build. So he assembled the town council together, and made his appeal to them, to the rulers, priests, nobles, and working people. He acknowledged that if the people of God work together, much can be accomplished. If we all join together, we'll see miracles after miracles and we'll be led to glorify God. Ellen White said, and by the way, uh, let me share to you in uh, chapter 2, verse 17. He asked for their partners, partnership and said, Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem. That is the mission. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem. Ellen White said in um, Review and Herald, Herald, December 2, 1890, The secret of our success in the work of God will be found in the harmonious working of our people. The secret of our success is that we'll have harmonious working, working together. There must be concentrated action. Every member of the body of Christ must act his part in the cause of God according to the ability that God has given him. We must press together against obstructions and difficulties, shoulder to shoulder, heart to heart, will succeed. Matthew Henry said, saying and doing are often two different things. As always the case, as I mentioned to you a while ago. Men are ready to say, let us rise up and build, but sit still and do nothing. Like that first son who said, I go, but went not. Nehemiah is both ready to say and to do. And I believe you have the same spirit. We are willing to support not only by, my, by our mouth, but even by our wallet. Not only of the mouth, not only of the heart, but with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our resources. This is about the glory of God, and I believe each one is willing to join. Nehemiah believed that if God could, move, could uh, move the heart of a pagan king to partner in his God-sized project, he could simply move the hearts of his own people to do this huge task. And his challenge, verse 17, that we may no longer be a reproach. Nehemiah focused on the glory and greatness of God. Yet, the city were a reproach to the Lord. The restoration of the wall is far more than security. 
It has something to do not only in their faith individually and as a community, but to God as well. Our mission is crystal clear. We exist to make disciples, and this can be accomplished if we all go, baptize, and teach all nations. Ellen White said, Every soul should take an active part in advancing the cause of God. Whatever our calling, as Christians, we have a work to do in making Christ known to the world. We are to be missionaries, having our chief aim, the winning of souls to Christ. Lemai's encouragement can be, find, uh, can be found in verse 18. He said, I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me. By telling the people what God had already done in him, God's intervention, by having uh, found favor in the sight of the king, his appeal was positive as he focused on the glory and greatness of God. And when you think about it, it's amazing. The people responded, chapter 2, verse 18, let us rise up and build. God moved the hearts of his people and they responded. They said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to do this good work. As they responded and gave their hearts to the Lord, they set their hands to do this good work. The Jews were convinced that the time was right to build the walls. I would like to share to you, it's one thing to like it, but it's another thing. If I will do it. You see, um, when you read Nehemiah chapter 3, it will take us for quite some time before I cannot understand what's going on in that rebuilding of the wall. You can see many names there, so many families. I don't uh, really appreciate it before, not until I understand total member involvement. Now, I'll, I will not read it at, at this time, but let me share to you, let me give it to you as an assignment. Please, please take particular interest in those words and after him, and after that name, and after that family next to him, then after that family next to him, and after him, and after that, meaning total member involvement. Nehemiah's cha chapter 3 is a very interesting chapter when we talk about total member involvement where every family gets involved in rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. Now, I don't have much time, but let me share to you in chapter 2 verse 20. Nehemiah's faith, the God of heaven himself will prosper us as we give our hearts to God, as we share, as we become concerned to God's mission, the Lord, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, his servants will arise and build. Here, Nehemiah showed his confidence in God. It's not about expenses. Not even investment that others say it's an investment. But for Jeremiah, it's about the glory of God. Then he acknowledged that they are God's servants with a mission. In the same way as we execute our plans. To start a project here, let us keep our focus on who we are. We are the concerned people of God, ready to accomplish His will for the glory of His name. Remember who we are. What is our life's mission? And move on regardless of any 
circumstances or opposition. Now, I'm coming to my close, the close of this message. Let us see the result of this project. This multi-year project was accomplished in a world record of 52 days. We can find that in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul in 52 days. As the people of God join together, have that strategy of prayer and partnership, we will see, we will experience success and beyond that, the glory of God. Nehemiah saw God's mission and felt the passion. He prayed earnestly and the people involved freely in his mission. As it was in the days of Nehemiah, may it be so in our time that every one of us who are here this evening will join together, rally together, give our hearts to God, and see and experience to ourselves the power of God working in us. As a result, they succeeded. What about us today? Do we have plans in building the kingdom of God? What about our church? Do we have plans in preparing more people? In bringing them here so that together we'll experience the mighty working of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our midst. As Nehemiah succeeded in reaching his goal, may we all experience the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we receive the message from the Lord, Throughout the day, since this morning, we are so blessed by the Lord. Feed us with His messages. What are we going to do with all these messages? Are we ready to respond by saying, Here I am. Send me. Empower me. And let me be counted to be part of his finishing work. I would like to call on our pastor. Our pastor's here. Are you, are you still around? I would like to invite you to join me as we reconsecrate ourselves to God. As we give our hearts to God. I would like to invite you to join me here. All pastors, please come forward. Let us set a good example, just like in, in Nehemiah chapter 3. The high priest, the priest, the leaders of the church set a good example of joining the holy work of the Lord. Thank you for your response. I would like to call also all of our leaders, elders, to come forward, if you can sense God's invitation for you to join in this God-sized project of building God's kingdom in this territory, please come forward. Elders, leaders, officers of the church, please come forward. As leaders, we will lead God's people and be an example to all our members. Please come forward. Let us set a good example in leading God's people in doing 
this great and wonderful project for the Lord. Everyone who want to join in this project, please stand up, be counted, come forward, and we'll all have our commitment through prayers. Those who want to join in this project, please come forward, stand up. I hope you don't stand because others or many other people are already standing, but you stand up because you are convicted to support, to join this effort of having our evangelistic meeting in this place. Thank you for your support. God bless you. Let us pray together. Our great and wonderful God and Father in heaven, we are your people. We are your servants. You have called us not only to inherit eternal life, but to bring glory and honor to your wonderful name. Oh God, as we stand before you, let this be an expression of our support, of our heart's desire to see your glory and your kingdom be established just where we are right now. Oh God, be exalted. Be glorified in our midst. Here we are, O oh God, surrendering all our lives to you, all of ourselves, our talents, our resources. We give it to you, O oh God. And we ask, O oh God, that you sanctify us so that you could use us mightily in the finishing of your holy work. As we stand before you right now, let your Holy Spirit take full control of our thoughts, of our minds, of our hearts. Fill us right now with your Holy Spirit. Continue to make our hearts burning for your kingdom. Grant us, O God, to see your glory be seen in our midst. As we stand before you, O God, bless us with many opportunities so that through our lives and ministries, your name will be exalted. Grant us many opportunities to join, to get involved, to do everything that we can, even sacrificing our time, our resources, to see your kingdom advancing in this territory. Bless us, O God, that we might be able to be a blessing as well to all the people around us. Make our lives count for your kingdom. Make us all a channel of your blessing. An instrument in your mighty hand whom you could use to accomplish your purpose. And as Nehemiah, your servant, succeeded in accomplishing the mission that you have for him, may we also experience the same success and that your name Continually be glorified through our lives and ministry. Bless each family represented by each one of us here. Help us all to give our hearts 
to give our all for you and for your kingdom. Help us all, O God, not only to be ready for your soon coming, but that we might all be useful in bringing more souls, more families for your kingdom. Make our lives more useful, O God. Grant us many opportunities to do more, to bring more glory to your holy name. Bless the organizers of this uh, gathering, of this project. Bless each one of us with more of your spirit working in our lives, transforming us till we all gather together and work together and see your glory in this place. Thank you, O God, for granting us all these prayers. All these favors we ask in the loving and wonderful and powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. I need all of your attention just for a minute. Will you be seated please? Just one minute. I want to promise that I will keep it very short. In the first place we want to praise God for whatever has happened today for his glory. It's all for him. I also have to mention there are quite a few people who have really supported financially for the pavement, for the transportation, for the drink that you had, for the lemon, the honey. Want to very specially thank them. Also want to thank the conference president. I have a very important announcement to make. Kindly do not mistake me for making. The hotel administration just called me and they said that this book was placed right at the entrance and this cost quite a lot of money. By mistake, some of the children have taken off all the books. So they did not do it intentionally or deliberately. Um, if not, I have to pay for all the missing books. I will be very happy if you could kindly do me a favor I'm a very poor pastor from India, so please, by mistake, if any of them have taken this book, you don't even have to meet me. Kindly leave it at the far end of the glass table. I want to say it very respectfully and sincerely. Uh, we do not want to leave this place uh, with another impression. Uh, it is not going to cost much. Uh, we can pay it but I'm not worried about the payment. It was just by mistake. Some of the children, when they went out, they took it. So in case if parents, if you have seen them, don't meet me, you don't have to give it to me. Just put it there at the rear end of the table. God bless you and thank you all so very much. Uh, exactly, we have one minute, 7.30. We are supposed to vacate this building. It's 7.29, so let's try to double up our exit. Thank you so much.